I don't know. Hello, everybody. Welcome. So today, I only worked a half day. Pretty sick. But we'll do a shameless plug right here. Dumblers. V-Belt and Sun. We will custom your name on it. So you're choosing. These are available on my website, vbeltandsun.com. But today, I want to do a speed test. Um, unload time with your standard ratchet binders on your standard mega ramp gooseneck trailer versus a hydraulic dovetail trailer and another curveball with the speed binders drill gun applicated they are speedy that is for sure i will take the one strap off the back make it a even four binder battle and we'll see what's one is more efficient standard operating i put scotch blocks under this one i put blocks under the tail of the trailer so that it does not pick the tongue up and thus pick the rear end of my truck up off the ground. Yeah, I feel a lot safer by scotching and blocking. Certain situations I will scotch the new trailer, but I will not put any blocks under the rear end of this thing because the tail takes care of all that work and the tongue does not lift my pickup. So I'll try doing these side by side for you guys so you can see which one is faster. And uh, I have my money on one of them. But we're going to start with that truck over there because I think I actually locked my keys in the new truck. And how that happens is uh, I'll park the truck, go inside, forget to lock it, and I lock it with my phone. So sometimes it takes a little bit to unlock. So we're going to wait for that thing to start up. But to you guys, you won't even know the difference. So let's go ahead and get this party started. <laughs> done man just judging by the timer that is on the recording front of the GoPro it is saying that uh, we're about twice as fast with the new setup I actually did pick up the pace with the old rig because I was getting kind of over it I just wanted to get it done so about three and a half minutes to seven minutes that's how long it takes I mean, obviously, seven minutes isn't that. I mean, it's not big a deal. That's not that much money wasted, time spent. But two things happened. For one, you can hear my voice probably change a little bit more because my lungs are kicking good with this cold that I'm suffering through. I had to do some manual labor, which, again, that's not a bad thing. Lifting up these ramps. A lot of brands, these ramps are not very heavy. With the spring assist, even with the upgraded springs, these ramps are still extremely heavy, and I broke a lot of sweat. Uh, I have had a situation where I hurt my back um, because somebody ran me off the track dirt bike riding. Yamaha riders, I tell you. Anyway, landed on my back and a couple days off, but coming back to work trying to lift these ramps, 
that was killer so if you're at all injured these ramps will suck versus hydraulic no problem uh i put safety scotches underneath this one a lot of people don't do that i'm feeling you know like i should because well you got a seventy thousand dollar pickup at the front of this you got a hundred and something thousand dollar tractor driving off of it you don't want anything to get weird that's just too much to jeopardize put scotches underneath it and call it good i did have to over block the back normally i just throw these little guys underneath my ramps and it'll work sweet but for this situation it was a little bit higher up in the air and again the extra precaution take the extra little bit of safety so that nothing goes wrong uh, I did scotch the truck. I don't know if I showed that on the clip for you guys, but she was scotched, but this one is in completely level spot. And the hydraulic tail acts as a scotch block for one, because it's a drag, just like if I was going to put the bucket or the blade down on a piece of machinery. This thing pushes into the ground, holds it locked right there, holds it more than just freewheeling. And it also... Like I said, applies pressure to the ground so that the tongue of the trailer will not lift, causing the truck to get weird. Back in the day, my dad, he, uh, he's got a little uh, 10K rated tandem single, uh, single wheel rig, and he was on a little bit of a slope. Uh, you know, things happen, and uh, it picked the tongue of his trailer up, lifted the ass axle, the rear axle on his truck, and by the grace of God, there happened to be a 4x4 down the road a little bit he was on a slope and it caught the front tire of his truck and uh stopped the whole rig from moving so for some reason that's always been in my mind i never really care to load a machine on a trailer unless i know the tail of the trailer is anchored good it cannot sag because if you guys don't understand if the tail of the trailer gets pushed down it's just like a teeter-totter it lifts this up and if you have your truck in gear or your parking brake Chances are, unless you put it in four-wheel drive, your rear axle is the only one that's locked. Your front one, that's still freewheeling. So I like to put it in four-wheel drive just the same. Um, if it's in a weird spot, definitely put it in four-wheel drive or put a scotch under it. But to really rule that out, you need to do that stuff in the back. But let's talk about those speed binders. Again, yeah, you have to have a drill gun to operate these things. That's not a big deal. I have two drill guns and two batteries in case the drop one one breaks battery goes dead stuff can happen you just got to be prepared ready for the job have your tools in order but, you know you can grunt work no matter what happens as long as you're physically able you can flip those ramps and you can crank those ratchets that setup is you know solid as a rock as far as that goes this one there could be some variables but I didn't break a sweat working this setup. The other one I definitely did, and it didn't help my cold out at all. Uh, running the other setup in the world is this one was, I would say, pretty much effortless. These things, people keep asking about them. They're speed binders. I've been hauling with them for a couple weeks now. Every load I've done on this new trailer has been with those speed binders, and I'm definitely very happy with them. As long as you got a good charge on your drill gun, so that those things get nice and tight, you got no worries. I'll tell you that much right now. Uh, you always, you know, no matter what kind of binder you have, you should definitely pull over and check, make sure everything's still tight and secure at some point in your journey. You don't want to be getting there and realize one of your binders fell off because you didn't pull over halfway because you were lazy and didn't check stuff. Load settle, stuff shifts, it happens, even for the best. But, old faithful, this thing still does it. I've been running this setup for three years. No complaints other than... It's a lot more effort to get this one safe and comfortable. I would continue running it, but sometimes you just got to upgrade. And sometimes, well, hopefully every time your upgrade is awesome. And I've been very happy with that. I would like to try out the, uh, what do you call it? It's like an airbag torsion hitch for the front of this thing. I'll see if I can get my hands on one of those. If you guys don't know what that is, it makes the ride a little bit more uh, cushionable so that there's a hitch that goes right here maybe i'll throw a picture up that absorbs the shock right here uh, i haven't seen really any reviews on one of those things so maybe i can get a video uh, install and ride along with that this trailer definitely does ride uh, significantly different than the old one i got to put the load in a different position uh, riding empty 
I can definitely tell there's a difference trailer back there. But this thing, with this trailer just towing around, I didn't really notice the difference going up hills. Um, power felt about the same when you're pulling about 30,000 pounds behind a pickup. Uh, you know, you're pretty much using all the effort you got. But coming back down the hill, again, people question brakes. 5500s, bigger brakes. And then I have hydraulic disc brakes on the trailer. I'll tell you boys, that, that thing stops. No problem. But then I have exhaust brake and I have the pack brake engine brake on the top of the head. It opens up six of the exhaust valves just like a Jake brake would. And that those two combinations work wonders. But coming down some hills, uh, hills that I've gone a million times down, running down hills, I usually already have my gear picked out before I even get to the hill, downshift it, make sure my speed is appropriate. And normally it just, it sails right down the way I want it. But with this trailer, again, it's supposed to be lighter weight and I could definitely feel lighter weight because the truck was slowing down easier and it was like I was running a lower, lower speed coming down the hills by the time I hit the bottom with no brakes compared to the old trailer, which was definitely heavier. So one can be said about this thing you don't think about it for pulling up the hill less weight may more payload sure but then coming back down the hill thousand pounds is still a thousand pounds 1500 pounds something like that that's the difference in weight between this trailer and the old that's a thousand plus pounds of weight you don't got to hold back coming down the hill so that's another perk with it but hope you guys enjoyed that video i have to take the 080 down to the shop i don't know if i'll get it tonight i've been running off of this go go juice that Taylor, my, my lady concocted and but these tumblers though man this thing has been i mean it's been warm for a long freaking time it's still too hot to drink ebuildingsun.com anyway i got to take the 080 down there complete filter change on it everything on it complete fluid the works it's about due for it and then the 12 i got the pallet forks they need to hop on that thing and they need to move some of these big cinders but anyway <sighs> Comment below. Let me know what you guys think about the new setup with the speed binders versus the old one. A lot of people like to just go old iron. Don't trust the technology. Don't trust the drill gun. Don't trust the hydraulic hose. I understand that. We run new technology with hydraulic hoses each and every day. Stuff has problems. Knock on wood, that hasn't. Uh, hoses break. Wires break for some reason. Get corroded, whatever. But beating up your body, that breaks yourself too. So... What you gonna do? Comment below which one you guys would prefer. But we'll see you guys in the next one. Like this video, share this video, and subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. We'll do the, uh, I gotta announce a giveaway for that 25K here real quick once I get, uh, get my ducks in a row. Later guys, see ya.